everyone and welcome back to my channel this episode will be about the first night in prison um so i was i had my custodial sentence at hmp uh, here in west london um on the 21st of april this year um i was sentenced to 16 weeks reduced to eight and i was uh, actually released on home detention curfew uh which is tagged on the 30th of may the day after my birthday actually um 29th of may so it was a nice little birthday present to get out uh, on the 30th to be fair but um the first night in prison so um how you get there i mean you would have had your trial uh, my trial was at um, Ealing Magistrates Court. Um, you'd have your trial during the day. Depends, depends on their lineup. Really depends. Um, my one was at pretty much like half four, so I was pretty much there from the morning. Um, I was detained at Acton Police Station and um, sent there at eight thirty. The circle. Uh, staff would pick you up and uh, transported me there at roughly about almost nine o'clock when I got to um, the Ealing uh, Magistrates Court. When I got there, waiting around for ages, that is the hardest thing. That's, that's in my eyes, that's torture. The um, waiting around, waiting around to be seen, to be heard. Um, it, 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 it's, it is really torture. Anyone who's been through it would know what I mean when just waiting inside the cell is torture as opposed to you might have had the bail conditions and been uh, released uh, and then your trial sentence would be on the day so you would have had a free time to go around roam around come in in and out um, but in my case I was detained uh, and therefore sent straight to the uh, magistrates court and locked in the cells so once your sentence right um, you will wait for the van and it will be generally when the um, courts closes and that's generally here in London, UK we're at 6 o'clock and most courts anyway but what would happen is uh, you wait till around that time till everything's all finalised till the last last one gets sent on trial um, and get shipped out um, it wasn't too far, to be honest, from Ely Magistrate's Court to Acton. It was about a 15-minute drive. So you get in, you're in your van. It's a cubicle, a small, small toilet cubicle. It, that's literally what it is. So you've got um, a window to your left, if you're on the, sitting on the left-hand side, or a window to your right, if you sit on the right-hand side, depending where you are. I was on the left, so I could see anything on the left-hand side. Um, on the van actually held six so you can there's, there's some which can hold ten eight i mean it really does depend on how many are sentenced on the day so that that van um you get the you, you'd get the the size that is according to how many needs to be transferred so in, in our case there was only three of us that got sentenced at um eating magistrates court so in the van make your way over to hmp uh, in my case, only scrubs. I never been in and out of prison. Um, not been on recall. Not been being transferred. It's my first time, first first ever time. So when you get in, the van pulls up, the gate opens. There's two gates. Opens, van goes in, the gate closes. You wait there. You wait there as that's the transfer of all your belongings. So the things that you've brought in with you, um, wallet, phone. Um, jewelry, all these bits will get passed onto the main reception, um, handed over there, checked through, and then that gets sent over to the induction reception. So after that handover is done, it's usually about 10 to 15 minutes. Generally, again, torture because you're anticipating, anticipating going in now, um, and you are inside, literally inside. So Gate opens, you will drive through round. Um, I don't know what it was like way back in the day. 
I mean, you know, neither did I know how it was uh, post COVID or during COVID. Um, but it's the B wing, which is the induction wing. So drive up to the induction wing, which is roughly, if you were to walk, which I did anyway, from the B wing <laughs> out to the main gate, you're roughly looking at about a seven minute, five to seven minute walk. Depends how fast, but generally about five to seven minute walk. So, but you get to the uh, B wing, the entrance, wait again. Um, my case, we was in still in the van for about 15 minutes. Um, this was because there was a van prior to us, right? So there was already three inmates in there. Um, we got there before us, so they those three were getting checked in, and then we were let out to get checked in. Uh, when you get checked in, you walk up to the desk, you're handcuffed. They'll, when they take you out, sorry, they, you, you're handcuffed. Um, which I don't know why, because you can't get out anywhere. You can just know where to run. Uh, but I understand the security risk. Um, but you're handcuffed until you get inside the doors, and then they close the gate. Um, once you're in, uh, the prison officer staff, they'll start to check you in. Name, date of birth, um, location. Uh, they ask you what gang you're in. Um, and I, that's for your safety. So you need to do let them know if you're in any gang. Um, I wasn't, I'm not in any gang. Um, I've got family, that's my gang. Um, but for your safety wise, they're not going to put you on a wing where, you know, you have your rivals on there because it's a risk. You will be a risk, you'll be a target, right? Uh, another one is your religion as well. Um, so, uh, Muslims are pretty much separated. They, I mean, they are on the wing. Yeah, our brothers are on the brothers are on the wing, um, but they try not to mix. Uh, so you go through all of that, you get checked in, and you go into into a room. It's now a waiting room, a waiting room for you to be seen. Um, in our case, because we got there at sort of like ten past six, quarter past six. Um, what happened to us? And there were six of us. Is that? You get your food. We were served hot meal, um, straight away. Hot meal straight away. Uh, you get, you can get vegan. Uh, there was uh, one with meat. I had pasta and tuna. To be fair, that was probably what we needed <laughs> after not eating for like you know three nights, being detained, uh, to come into a hot meal. That was that was that was warming. And um, you have that. Once you finish your meal, um, you're now going to be handed all of your induction uh, kit, I, I call it kit. Um, so what that is, is you get your bedding, you get one pillow cover, uh, one bed sheet cover, both are green, like this lime, lime green. Um, you get one orange blanket, it's like one of those ones that your grandma would knit way back in the day, it's got whole squares in it an orange one um, that's what you get then you get your set of clothes you get two grey tracksuits round neck jumpers uh, trousers two t-shirts two sky blue boxes um, and your induction pack as well um, during that time you are in that room you will strip you will be stripped. They want to see everything, right? That's how they are. So that, they, I mean, that makes sure that you're not bringing in any sort of like contraband drugs, uh, mobile phones. Um, you know, they've got the scanner as well that you'd have to go through as well if they suspect you. Um, specifically, if you're like a transfer, for example, um, or you're known, you've been on recall, uh, for instance. So. Um, that's what they'll do. They will put you through that scanner. Um, during that time, I mean, you know, the prison officer is checking you in. Um, he's telling you everything. I mean, things are going through 100 miles an hour, right? When they start checking you because it's quick. They need to do it quick because it's coming up to, it is the evening time. 
Um, so they want to get you in the cell, in, out, done. Uh, bigger hook. Um, so it kind of, there's a lot of things going at 100 miles an hour. They're trying to explain to you X, Y, and Z. And obviously in that heat at the moment, and that moment in time, sorry, you, you, my mind weren't really paying attention to be fair. Obviously not. I just wanted to get into this room, this cell, which I thought it was, uh, immediately, and that's it. But it wasn't like that. It was actually a door uh, where I built in with six. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, so once they've checked you in and you know they've counted all your your monetary things, uh, your, what what uh, contents were in your wallet, um, the clothing that you've got, they'll tell you whether you're allowed black or not, and you're not allowed any black black tops, black t-shirts, um, black tracks, which is quite hypocritical. Hypocritical actually, because um, on wing. A lot of the brothers are wearing black, so I wasn't allowed my black T-shirt, and my did that's top or my black tracksuit. It is how it is. Um, after that is all done, next up is your healthcare check. So now at this point in time, they they are asking you questions about your health. Um, the health question, a basic health question. Uh, the nurse will go through that with you. If you need a jab, they'll tell you about a jab, um, which will come within the, ne within the next few days, by the way. Um, but what what they do there um, is that they'll take your blood pressure, make sure that you know everything's fine. Again, my blood pressure was a bit slightly high. I mean, again, it's your first time in, so you know there are going to be there are going to be you know these factors. Um, but they're going to monitor you and you know the nurses there are good stuff um, once all of that check is done we got put into another waiting room this is where now all six of us were were in and this is just opposite the health uh health check uh, room by the way uh literally health check room and you know the waiting waiting cell room so all six of us were in there ready to go up to the induction room um taken out it's quite a bit of a walk, to be fair. Um, had to go up four flights of steps. I mean, that time, that's the floors landing. Yeah, there's four floors in scrubs. It's got the ones landing, the twos landing, threes landing, and then the fours landing. Only four, four floors. Uh, so we were on the fourth, fourth floor. That was our landing. So. You get taken up into the induction wing now. Everyone's checking you in again. Um, get to meet some of the staff. You get to meet some of the orderlies. Orderlies are cell mates, prisoners that have trust and they will work. They've been working on the wing. Um, they've got a level of trust and specifically the induction wing they're there to sort of help you get in and settle in and give you all the paperwork and the induction and you know it was a short brief one because it was the evening it wasn't in the morning right um so you go upstairs um met the brothers up there as well um they'll tell you a little bit about the what to expect what's going to happen um you get to make a phone call um very important that you've got that two minutes um, allowance from from the prison. Uh, your that's your time now to make that call uh, to your family members to let them know that you are in. Um, if they didn't, if they weren't there at the trial, um, or they didn't know about it, um, that was your, that's your opportunity. Um, ideally, again. I, not wishing on anyone to go in but have numbers memorized um, have numbers in your wallet that you can take out and use because without a phone um, some of us don't remember you know it, it's easy now for us to just look through a phone and boom, find the name whereas in times like that I should have had something written down because uh, I didn't have any numbers written down. I never did. Um, I only knew certain numbers anyway. But I mean, friends-wise is what I mean. If 
you need um, your friend's number, you're going to have to now sort of make it, 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 make, it prolongs it a little bit. So ideally, you want to put down um, your contact so that, that way you can start making calls once you get to yourself. Anyway, I'll we'll get down onto that later. Um, while you're up there on the induction ring, um, prison officers are now going to ask you. You get two packs. Uh, your starter pack, which is if you smoke or not. So you will get a vape pen, which is that. It's a vape 88 pen. You'll get a kit, which is this. You get your charger, and then you get these. Uh, in a box, there's three. Three of these, and you get two boxes. The other set is if you don't smoke, then you get like a snack bag. So the snack bag has like, you know, a bag of crisps, um, some biscuits, uh, fruit. Um, it it kind of really does depend on that, on, on who's packed it, to be honest with you. Because every, every prison, every prison is different from what I've heard. Um, so, you know. If you're a smoker, uh, because they don't, they don't allow you to smoke tobacco in, inside anymore. It's now vape pens, like this. So, I got my vape pen. This is what I got. I chose this one. Um, once you've all settled down, oh uh, sorry, one actually once the orderlies have explained to you everything, uh, not everything, um, but just the bare basics. Um, now you get taken to your cell door. In our case, there were six of us, like I said. We got all banged up um, in one room for one night. And you didn't know who these people are. It could be, if you're going in, you might be lucky that you might find a friend in there, but um, obviously, all of us that got in, this was all our first time. All of our first time. There was one guy, five of us, I should say. One guy was on a transfer. Um, and he's, you know, big man. Big man Luke, hold it up. I know you're coming out soon, my brother. Um, keep away from trouble in there. And uh, you're going to come out and see your family. Be with your family. Be with your missus. You know, I, I, hope, I hope you get out ASAP. ASAP. I know you're looking forward to it. Um, but you, my brother, you're the one on the transfer. Um, so, this room has got six beds. Um, and you have a toilet in there, separate, and two showers. Uh, you also have a TV in there. And you have a kettle. And those are just the things that you will be expecting when you get into your cell. Now, that first night, how do you sleep? <laughs> I mean, if the guy next to you snores like a roaring lion, then you're not going to sleep at all. Um, but you're going to have to try, do what you can, work it off, work it out. Um, it was what I was doing immediately. Um, just again, just trying to do work out to get yourself tired to calm yourself down, try and focus on what's coming up ahead. Um, you just want to relax and you just want to get some, get as much rest as you can because the day is going to be long ahead. Um, this wing though that you come in, there's six of you in the cell. So you have to start getting to know someone because that one person is going to be your cellmate. And my cellmate was a Rasta brother, Mr. Blendon, my guy. Uh, we were we were we were paired up the following day, um, and we were in um, on the fours landing, uh, sixty-five cell number sixty-five B four six five. That was our that was our twin cell. Um, now you can play the game. Some people did. One of them did. Sorry. You can start to say things like you're not in the mood or you're not in the right frame of mind to 
be paired up with someone you know you might he said that i might do something um i'm volatile um, i could be violent um, is what he said and he managed to get his own self and it's a tactic that maybe you want to do those of you who have not been in uh, it might help you might not again you kind of want to start making friends <laughs> with the cellmates that you went in with which one either one because that person is going to be there with you um and someone that will watch out for you and you look out for them in life right you see what i mean um so for that following day uh me and patrick blenman we um we paired up um the other two paired up um one of them got on his own and uh, my guy our guy luke he went into um rehabilitation wing because uh, there's different wings out there um that first night i said it was hard can't sleep because there was someone snoring loudly like real 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 loud <laughs> we called him big bear big bear because he was a big bulgarian guy big big bulgarian guy and um you know snoring out snoring out couldn't sleep we were watching tv or was working out one of the other guys started working out um it was a good time i mean not obviously a good time good time but a good time where you get to know each other um and you know the guys that you went in with they're on the same wing as you when you got moved to um the falls landing um so you see them when you come out for association association means you get let out for one hour a day to do your shower work out in the gym um put through your paperwork um you only get one hour one hour now you might want to find out when you get in there what time you'll be let out so that way you've got kind of like a structure all right because for me it was we was on the b wing for two weeks before we got i got moved to to d d wing um so that was a single cell from d wing but you need to try and find a routine for yourself to keep yourself occupied to keep yourself busy um you might want to talk talk to the you know the fellow prisoners on that night about if anyone's been in there before i mean like i said uh luke who was there with us um maybe i've annoyed him with all these freshy questions that i had Do you know what i mean but i mean he, he, he's a top top he was a top guy he's a top guy he's been in and out um he, he told us told me the lowdown uh me personally because me and him were pretty much up majority of the night we were talking talking um i know he wanted to do his thing watching the tv read his uh, uh books um stuff like that um but he was always open and i think that i think if it weren't for him and thanks to him i didn't I learned a lot and I didn't find it intimidating at all to be on the wing. Um I mean yeah there's big guys in there you know if you're scared of a fight or you're scared of trouble or bullying or things like that. I mean just having a conversation with 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 Luke you really sort of calm down a lot of the um insecurities you could say that you think you're going to have in there. Um which I'll cover in another video by the way. that's that's for sure because you got you got to learn how to keep out of problems out of trouble um steer clear from you know certain certain gangs in there uh, or certain certain guys on the wing um I mean, I mean yeah the he was a huge 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 voice huge voice i mean we and we never got to see him again i never got to see him again we knew that he was um on the rehabilitation wing but you know you're not allowed to sort of cross and, and you know check over prisoners and that anyway so it really is every man for himself when he comes in it really is um, it depends on how you are so my suggestion is on your first night work it off 
and start working out and start start finding a routine start talking to um, you know if, if you come in with, with guys that have already been in find out find out about the system find out you know and this is one of the things I did I started finding out what time does is our association to be let out um, you know what jobs can we start applying for um, many 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 things go through your head many things go through your head you know I in a way, we were fortunate to have him, Luke, in our cell, you know, and he taught us a lot. He really did, really, 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 really did taught us a lot. I mean, that that is invaluable words of advice. Um, and this is something that I'd like to pass on, you know, to, to those who are maybe expecting to go in. Um, fingers crossed you don't. Um, but no matter what sentence it is, it's you're in there, so you can rehabilitate yourself. You know, find that, find find God, um, find find your path in life, your faith in life. Um, because if it weren't for Him, I wouldn't have read the Quran. I wouldn't have read the Bible again. Um, I would have liked to read like Hinduism, you know. I would have read. I would like to read other, other religious books that's in there. But the main main two were um, Islam and um, you know the Bible, Quran, sorry, and the Bible. So those were the two main books that um, I managed to get from the library. Library, thanks to my guy Luke, work for him. Those things will come to you slow. You know, there's not many people in there who are willing to help you like straight up give you give you all the answers do you see what i mean neither will the uh, prison officers or screws as some like to call them um some are very helpful some are very very unhelpful so you need to you need to speak to certain people about certain things and it's not like you're trying to pester them but you know always ask questions you know, if this guy's giving you one two words answers then maybe that's not the guy for you because um, you don't want to be asking like your fellow cellmates who are there inside the wing. You want to be talking to like the um, the workers on the wing, all the workers from from the cleaners who work on on the wing, from the from those who, who serve the food on the wing, from those who do the laundry on the wing, uh, from those who put through applications. Application meaning all the paperwork, which I can, which I'm going to be doing in another video, um, so you guys can sort of see how it works, which is so old fashioned in. Um, at scrubs like i've been you know i've heard stories uh that from other prisons you know you've got you've got the laptop uh sorry tablet that you can generally put things through for example um but scrubs is still sort of still going through that draconian covid measures um you know, it's still very, very, very backdated. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, all these little things like the canteen sheets, um, the food menu sheets. I mean, these are, I'm talking about this is paperwork. Other, other, other jails that were telling me that it was, it's already on a system. It's already on a tablet. It's all there. Boom, 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 punch it and finish, done. You see what I mean? Um, so it's one thing where I, I'd like to push for that change in, in, in the scrubs because It'll make things much easier for everyone. Um, recycled paper uh, will be at a minimum. Uh, pay, uh, paper usage will be at a minimum. Um, it just, I, I think if, if it was on like a smart tablet now or something like that, um, or even being able to access a computer, you know, the, the value will have to like, all of us, all, all the prisoners in there, will make a huge, huge, huge difference. Uh, being able to freely go on it and, and check, check how you do your things. Um, you know, you keep up to date because these things, you know, you, you, you're not up to date with, with anything. You know, you put through an app and it's 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 not even ready. Do you know what I mean? Um, some things are missed. Um, it's um, yeah. It, it, 
it was quite disheartening to know that it was it, it was um, it's, it's old it's old 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 system uh, we're not in we're not in the 80s or 90s normal um, surely they should have moved with the times by now but um, yeah that was my first night inside guys thank you for listening thank you for tuning in um, to this um, I hope it was as valuable if I missed anything um, or if you want to know anything leave leave anything in the comments below um, and I'll definitely address it um, everything I'll address anything you want to know about worm with scrubs um, like I said I haven't I haven't been into any other uh, prisons so I can only speak on behalf of worm with scrubs um, you know it, it is a good good HMP prison uh, to start off with I guess um, I, don't know, I, can't, I can't comment on any of the other ones um, but I can comment on on specifically scrubs and my time in there thank you again for listening uh, please subscribe and like